Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. You've seen me do a video to model this part. You've seen me do a video to add the cam tool pass on this part. Let's walk out to the garage and throw a chunk of material into the vise and run through the different ops to create the final part. So with that, let's head out there. We'll get this chucked up and I'll show you the start of the process where I'm gonna start setting some work offsets for op number one. I had some questions on the last machining video about setting my work offset. So excuse the shaky handheld phone, see if I can get some better for this in the future. But I'm currently in the measure work function. You can see I've got that key pressed. And when I come in here, now I have different options. I can do a single surface, four points, or find the center of a circle. For my work coordinate system for my very first setup, I'm gonna find the center of the top face. So I wanna choose the four point option. And now the user interface on the machine tells me that it wants me to come in from the left hand side and touch the part and then set that as my zero. And once I save P1, then the next thing it'll do is this, this picture will appear from this side telling me to choose P2, then P3, then P4. And when I'm finally done, I will just come here and hit save W work offset, save WO and it'll set my X, Y center to the center of those four points that I chose on the top of my block. Gonna start out the work on this part with a 3D adaptive using the three eighths inch three flute tool. This is gonna go and remove the majority of the shape of the part starting with the first step down and then it's going to do another step down and work the perimeter and the little recesses where the fastener heads go. One thing you can take note of while this cutter is doing this work is listen to the pitch of the cutter. It always sounds the same. No matter what it's doing, it's the same pitch, the same sound. It's never chunking off more material that it can handle. And that is the 3D adaptive, making sure that it's keeping that constant tool engagement angle and making that cut sound the same every time it enters and exits the material. And that is the 3D Adaptive complete. Now we're gonna switch into the 2D contour just to make a finishing pass around the perimeter of the part. Next up is the 3D flat. And what 3D flat does is finds any horizontal surface and automatically machines it. So right now it's working on the flat areas where the 
fastener heads are going to sit down into. Now it's going to step up to the next level and start working its way around the outside of the part. You can see some small retracts that hopefully can be improved in future versions of the software. And then it's just going around the opposite direction to finish the edge. Moving into the 3D spiral toolpath, I'm using a 3 8 inch 3 flute ball mill for this operation. It's running at about 10,000 RPM and it's doing a 10 thousandths of an inch step over. And this is just going to do the finished surface work on the dome that's left on there. I was going to try to maybe edit this a little bit, skip ahead, make it go faster, something like that. but. What the hell, it's a Saturday. I don't think it takes that long and we'll just let the thing play out. One thing I did want to make note is you're gonna see some splashing on the camera again. I've got the coolant pump on this really turned down. The coolant pump on the sile is pretty amazing. There's a ball valve that lets me choose if I want it to come through the washdown hose or if it's gonna come through the coolant lines. Um, and I can kind of vary the level to try to determine how much coolant is going to come out of there. And I've got this for this video, believe it or not, way turned down. I see a lot of other users of other machines trying to find better aftermarket pumps that they can install in the machines. On this machine, uh, my biggest fight that I have for videos like this is turning the coolant down. And you'll see it in a later clip that I get it turned down pretty good. But for production runs and things like that, you can really get some good coolant on your part and really blow those chips off. Quick spot drill operation for the four holes. One of the things I probably could have done is had it not retract past the top of the stock. It doesn't need to go that high, but you can see it really didn't take that long to get the job done. Getting ready to drill a hole, but before I do, I'm going to reach in here and get the coolant line adjusted a little bit better so the coolant's on the drill bit itself as before it does the drill operation. This is a number 7.201 drill, and it's just going to go through and punch those four holes. Now, remember how I said in the cam video that maybe you're going to see some mistakes. One of the things I should have noted is that I selected deep drilling instead of chip breaker partial retracts. You see the tool coming all the way out of the hole every time. That's definitely not needed. It really didn't take that long, but I didn't notice it until I was running this part out of the machine. follow up with a chamfer tool pass. So this is going to do the 20 thousandths of an inch chamfer around the very top of the part. And once this is done, it's going to drop in and do the four holes, which is just doing a very small, I call it a deeper tool pass, just putting a 10 thousandths of an inch chamfer on those edges just to make them not sharp anymore. Next up, we're going to see it do the magic chamfer tool path. Although we're not going to see very much, I'll get a closer up view of what the results of this tool path are once we get this tool path finished up and take a look at the part out of the machine.
the part is complete. Here's what it looks like. And maybe I'll try to zoom in on one of these chamfered edges. So you see how it put that 20,007 inch chamfer on that edge? And then it just, if I can get to focus, it just pulled up slightly right before that vertical wall. So there is that tool path. Uh, everything else, there you can see in, uh, what it looks like. So op one is complete. I'm ready to remove the excess hat of material using the inch and a quarter two foot shear hog. This really isn't a very hard operation to program. However, with the stepped jaws that I have, this one gave me a challenge. I slowed this toolpath down by quite a lot once I got this set up, and the reason is I can't really be hanging on to more than 20 or 30 thousandths, 50 thousandths, I'm not exactly sure, on the side of the part based on the parallel height that, that I have available to me and the step jaws. So I have to get that top of the part above the very top of the jaws, and to do that, I wasn't able to hang on to very much with the different parallel choices that I have, but you can see it's complete and that operation is now done. Reset my X and Y zero to be the left side of the part and the back face of the part or the front jaw is what I used. And now here comes that 3 8 inch three flute ball mill again. And it's just gonna do another spiral tool path. And this is just going to remove the material on the inside of the dome so that it finishes it up as it removes the material at the same time. I'll let this one run complete in a minute. I think you'll see me wipe the camera lens off. And then I'm gonna go play with the coolant pressure and really turn it down. I mean, I'm gonna get it so it's just barely trickling out of there. But even with that, you'll see some splashes still come up and hit the camera lens. the quarter inch spot drill just to spot the two eighth inch holes and put the chamfer on top at the same time. Two quick drilling operations with an eighth inch drill. I didn't pack or anything, just went and finished them and we're wrapped up with that one. Last operation to finish this part is I have to put a chamfer around here. Now, I had to do some checking on this because the chamfer tool gets awfully close to the step jaws. But once I brought the tool down to the coordinates and checked, I had a good amount of room so I didn't feel uncomfortable doing it once I did the safety check. Now it's just gonna put the chamfers on the four holes and that should complete the part. And there it is, there is the back side complete. You can see pretty decent service finish down in there. Um, didn't have very much problem getting that whole dome done without doing any roughing. See my two spotted and chamfered and eighth inch holes and all the edges got a slight chamfer de uh, placed on them. So uh, if I take it out, we can have a look. 
So there is the finished part. It seemed to have come up pretty good. I'll do some measurements offline and see how everything stacks out to size. Well, there we go. Part number two is in the book. So remember, this is the second part of the series for the Autodesk model engine, and this is the cylinder head. There's plenty of more components to go. Hopefully you guys picked up uh, maybe a tip or trick or two along the way between the modeling, the cam tool pathing, and the machining of the part. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below, or else you can send me an email, kevin at mechanicaladvantage.com. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.